Uh, welcome everybody to the 5th of July Cubert Community Meeting. Uh, welcome wherever you are joining us from. Um, is there anyone on the line who has um, attended before but hasn't introduced themselves or perhaps has been lurking for a while and wants to, um, to say good day and kind of say where they're from? Um, uh, hello, everyone. Um, I am Avinal. Um, I'm working at Red Hat, uh, uh, mostly on tech on results and pipeline service. So I got introduced to this community um, by uh, Chandler. And um, um, I'm unable to edit the docs, but I have some agenda for today. So um, should I add it now or um, I can go after uh, the agendas? Yep. Um, have you joined the Qvert community? Uh, yes, I remember joining it, but somehow I don't have edit access, but I'll check it again after the meeting. Um, so sometimes, uh, so you need to be uh, logged into the um, email, the account that you're a um, QVET community member with in order to be able to edit this it document. Uh, and I think at the top, we um, might have about that. Sure, I will do that. For now, I will just put in the chat and you can paste it. Um, yep. Thank you. That is me. And welcome. All right. Uh, is anyone else on the call that would like to say good day and introduce themselves? Very well. Um, and as always, if you have anything that you'd like to talk about, um, such as Avenel, uh, please add it to the agenda or the open floor, whichever one suits your needs. So we'll get started uh, with our schedule check-in. Um, hopefully people saw uh, my email that was sent out yesterday that was saying that we have pushed out the um, Qbert V1 release. I mentioned last week that there was a, a PR open to push it to the 6th of July um, when we met the maintainers last week. <clears throat> we thought that pushing back an entire week made more sense and that was pushed through and, and merged yesterday. Um, and so, yeah, that is now our, our GA release date, the 11th of July. And partially that's around, that's surrounding around the messaging and coordinating um, various uh groups and also this weekend uh, this this week has a lot of um uh different holidays in different places such as america and the czech republic so we thought the 11th of july was a better date and and again um regret any inconvenience that this um postponement may have caused move down to so i saw this from the mailing list um this is a it's not quite a um, I think this is an update. Ah, yes, from um, Adonis, from Suse, um, who proposed Helm chart installation. Um, yeah, so one thing I am trying to get a bit better at is um, kind of highlighting the design proposals as they come through in this meeting. Um, so I put that there. This is. Uh, the yep. to, Sorry, uh, I didn't update your... the document. All right. Uh, no, you're cool. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, the proposal is pretty much ready. Uh, when it comes to here, we obviously have many different customization options. So I've pretty much laid out the different approaches with how the Helm chart can be designed and implemented and in turn uh, published. So I would uh, love to have some more reviews on this one. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And 
hopefully we'll get a few more reviews from the people who are attending this meeting. Um, did anyone have any additional comments for that point before we move on? All righty. There was another design proposal that I saw on the mailing list. Um, that mass machine migration. I have transition from real time at least. Already a large conversation happening around that um, since last week. I'm just putting it there, highlight people who are interested in seeing it and maybe not have seen the mailing list. Um, we'll move now Thanks, to the Andrew. open floor. Just to uh, also re-emphasize and plug that, it's a, it's a cool new, uh, it, it's something we've been working on for some time. So uh, love some feedback and please get involved. Right on, thank you, Stu. All righty, um, Avanel, you've got the next point. Uh, yep, uh, hello again. So um, uh, uh, we all have used, I think, Katagoda here or at least heard about it. And I heard that Qbert is powering um, the killer coder that is a, a Katagoda clone. So, um, me and Chandler, we have been discussing since last month, what if, if we can have an open source uh, self-hosted version of Killer Coda that anyone can host. Um, so my uh, I have been doing some research and um, a little of a POC as well. So I would like to share um, uh, <clears throat> The front end I have developed for it, and I still uh, need help with the back end. So I will be sharing my screen now. Um, is it okay to share? Uh, you are muted. I sure am. Let me stop sharing mine, and you should be yeah. good to go. Thank you. Um, Uh, is it visible? I can see it on my end. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. So uh, initially, um, if any of you have used uh, Git pods, so um, when you want to start Git pod, you can just add a URL to the existing URL and it will open that particular repository uh, in a cloud ID. So I wanted the experience of a learner or user to be similar, where you can just put an URL uh, to the end and uh, it will just uh, redirect to you to uh, the course. So I can show you a little of what I have been working with. So let me put the link. So this is the link to uh, Qbert uh, Cartagoda scenario. And as we, let me reload this. Sorry, this doesn't. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, everything similar to Killer Coda. We have a left pane with uh, our the content, and the right pane that uh, it is uh, iframe that I have not uh, developed anything for it, but. Uh, once we develop the backend part of it, we'll be able to see our terminal or ID here. And then for now, you can just go through the content here. You can even see which of the code blocks are executable. So for now, I've just gone with uh, showing a green ring around it, but uh, later I, we can add uh, some kind of markers here, like play button. Um, so you can go through the tutorial uh, and there's a nice uh, um, highlight as well. So um, 
this part is almost complete. Like there's a lot of optimization and improvement to be done, but um, for POC, I, uh, I would say it's mostly complete. Now, um, yeah, so far, any questions from anyone? I think I'm going too fast. <laughs> Okay, so if uh, no one has any questions, so um, <clears throat> my idea of joining uh, this call was to uh, get an idea how I can start developing a backend which can create a VM on demand and destroy it when it is no longer uh, um, no longer used. So, like I have uh, seen videos about Killer Coda and uh, blog posts that it works uh, on top of KubeWord by demanding a VM whenever someone uh, opens the course. So I'm not trying to clone it exactly, but uh, that would be a good starting point. So I wanted to have idea how I can start developing such a thing. I'm definitely not qualified to answer this question, but um, many moons ago, I um, saw someone that had was deploying something similar with an OKD instance, which was using Virch to spin up virtual machines for the cluster. And I think it was just a big, ugly bash script. Okay. So uh, right now I'm trying to write a controller that would do it like, uh, like I work uh, in the Tekton community, primarily my work is on Tekton results. There we have a controller, a Tekton pipelines controller that talks to Tekton API, which creates all the pipelines and uh, task runs. Then we can reuse those API in other applications as well. So my starting idea is to do something like that. We already have uh, the KubeWord API and developing a controller that can talk to that API and create VMs on demand and manage it as well. I mean, now that you mentioned it, I'm not completely familiar with it, but I think we have Tekton, um, Tekton steps somewhere, um, but yeah, I, I would not know where to find them, to be honest. Um. Okay. So, uh, if you remember anything about it, what does it do? What is it used for? So the Tekton, yeah, like I said, I'm not familiar with those, but I just vaguely remember that. So I think we have Tekton. Um, I'm not even sure what the correct nomenclature and in, in this. Uh, Type is I think it's some something like called a step or something or like like it's a like a like a piece or something and that would actually create um, a virtual machine within Tekton. Um, so I'm I'm just I, you know what I'm just trying to to um, I'm just uh, shutting up now and just trying to find the link for you so that I don't bother everyone with my uh, obviously. Um, um, bad knowledge about this, sorry for that. So I'm just going to try to drop a link into the chat later on, if that helps. Sure, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, I have gone through many of the tutorials on the cube, like um, I couldn't find a tutorial where you can actually use the cube word API to do something. Um, so if something like that is available, that would be very helpful. I already, uh, see the API definitions, but no way there's no example I could find where I can use them in some kind of basic example. Uh, Avinal, I have a question for you. Um, 
Instead of yes, doing sure. bottom up, uh, which kind of tool would you like to use? Because I think there are many frameworks, and eventually, if you have some idea of frameworks, then we can see if we can uh, plug a uh, Qvert uh, API into it. Uh, or do you mean uh, if already have some tool that can utilize the API? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, even just for pods, for example, and then we can see if we can use Qvert with those tools. I mean, because your front end needs to somehow talk to some some framework. I mean, Tecton to me makes sense, but uh, my question is the other way around. Do you have your preference or do you have already an idea about the tool that you would like to use? And then eventually we can see if we can use that framework tooling with Qvert. Uh, yeah, that is a great session actually, but um... Right now, I don't have a tool in mind. Uh, my initial design idea was to talk to the backend through REST API calls. Like the front end is totally separate from the backend, and it just communicate through REST APIs. So something we have to develop from scratch if it doesn't exist. Yeah, because I, I don't know, I think maybe Qvert API uh, is a little bit too low level for this. So maybe having something in between like Tecton, I don't know, I think Tecton might be might be already something that can, can abstract at least the VM operation because at least you need to, I don't know, maybe have the possibility to take a template based on the scenario that you want to run, then you want to start the VM and then eventually when it's done, just deleting it. So. Now that I think uh, having Tecton task for managing the VMs, like there's already some example, I still have to go through it. It's not a bad idea at all. It's already established uh, um, it's a platform and I can already talk to Tecton API through yeah. uh, APIs that I already aware of. So, As, so do you plan to use uh... Do you plan to use the uh, underlying uh, Kubernetes cluster and install the Qvert and the uh, Tecton? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I can try with Tecton, but uh, if it uh, doesn't exactly match with what uh, I uh, what this tool demand, what this platform demand, then probably we have to dis uh, develop something from scratch. But I will try that for sure. Um, that is a great solution. Yeah, I, think, so, I don't know. You can, uh, I think, have a look to framework that start pods maybe on demand. Sure. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Um, someone else was saying something. I will stop sharing my screen if no one has any question on this thing. But so um, I have added the link to the Qubit Tecton Task Repository, which is part of the Qubit organization, to the open floor below your open floor point. I hope that is enough to get you started somehow. Sure, I will go through it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Evan, for bringing that in. Uh, yep, that is all from my side. Um, awesome. Thank you. Very much. Mm -hmm. Ready. Um, Daniel, you have the next two points. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm just trying to get this this annoying full screen view off again so that I can read everything. Um, okay. So it's playing tricks on me here. Um, 
So, yeah, I wanted to just uh, quickly um, raise this mini PR that I've brought up. Uh, we were discussing this morning uh, to emphasize uh, the value of draft PRs um, on itself in order to save resources. If you uh, are not yet sure what uh, whether your PR goes into the right direction, and we were we were discussing that we would favor something like a, like a default to a draft PR. And um, I was researching a little bit on that topic, and I, what I saw was that actually the uh, GitHub uh, doesn't want to force um, this default onto its people somehow because it fears that um, somehow maybe um, PRs that get opened um, and forgotten to be put from draft into a normal state would actually be uh, somehow uh, forgotten and the burden would be too, would be too high. I can somehow agree with that so um so i thought what else would be possible and i just came up with this idea of just adding it to the template so that you have something like um whenever you open a pr that you uh, are reminded to consider creating a, a pr as a draft i think that's that's an easy solution to just remind people of maybe that they if they are not completely ready they can just open a draft pr yeah, but let me know what you think about that. I think it's easy. It doesn't hurt anyone because it's just marked on. And yeah, so hopefully it works. Let's see. That makes sense. Yeah, that's me. true. That's that's true. I know. I know, Jeff, that um, this default is obviously um, being kept by um, by GitHub. But yeah, it's it's. I think it doesn't hurt to just um, maybe open it as first as a draft, and the to to convert it from a draft to a normal PR is just one click of a button. I'm not sure if that is too much to be asked somehow, but I think that. Um, in order to uh, to maybe save resources on CI or something, or maybe not even bother people with your unready PR, um, so they don't spend valuable time on looking at something that might not be ready for review, uh, would be probably valuable it to of this extra click. But yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I, I was just thinking about just uh, considering to do this, not even forcing to do this, but just considering it. So and that was the easiest solution that came to mind. Um, so I, I'm going to continue talking because, um, because the next point is also by me. Um, so this one is the uh, gen, uh, a tool that I've been working on. So since we are looking at flakes, um, I wanted to have a more condensed picture of uh, where exactly those flakes are hurting us somehow. Um, so I generated an HTML um, a tool that generates a page that would help you to find the hotspots and uh, where the most flakes occur. Um, it does this in two, in two uh, dimensions. First of all, it, does it per day and then second of all it does it per lane so you see um in the screenshots for example um in the overall aggregates you see uh the flakes that occur per day um and then you see yeah, then you can easily spot exactly when what exactly the hotspot days were so in this screenshot it has been 8th of june with 10 point 10 percent of the of the all the um of all the failures that have been there um and um yeah per lane also would tell you for example that like the sick compute lane has been uh, uh one of the top hotspots with 49 failures somehow um also it has something like um it aggregates if you scroll a little bit or if you go back to the pr andrew um and scroll a little bit down then you see the per test aggregates which tells us um, something about the uh, what the top flaky tests are somehow. 
Um, you would probably see, for example, like this one, the Tom Flakey test in that screenshot is just this test that has a share of 7.45% of the failures of on overall lanes. And it hurts um, in the 125 SIG operator lane the most. So uh, we've been trying out this tool in our weekly meetings and it helped a lot. And yeah, maybe, so um, it, it helps other people also to look at that. So if they are working against flakes and so on, so to see where we stand. Um, so if you could, could go back one page again, uh, Andrew, and maybe click on the link that is on the top of the, uh, on the top of the page somewhere, there is a full example of the report. Yeah, exactly. That's a live page that I generated so that people can get a feeling of how everything works, like for filterings um, and everything else that you could probably take a look at um, um, whether you're, uh, for example, the, the flake you are working on the, or the test that is flaky that you're working on is part of the list and where it stands. I have um, actually by intent left out the ranking somehow, but it's just sorted top down from the participation of the failure. So the lower down your test is, the, the better uh, this test somehow is performing or the less flakes it has as part of this. So that, that should be it. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to uh, hear um, your uh, feedback on this one. Uh, ping me if you have any questions. And um, yeah, other than that, I hope that this is somehow useful for everyone. Awesome. So what? Yeah, just just one last thing that I forgot. I'm I'm just going to um, I put as part of this PR, I put up a, a, a periodic job that will recreate this link that you see here at the full example that will create recreate this um, this page for, on a daily basis so that we always have this handy and can see where it hurts us. No, I'm going to stop talking. Thank you. <laughs> I like uh, some of the other people would say. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I've uh, put that link into the chat as well, um, just so people can find it and bookmark it. Um, do... Daniel, do we have that? Um, and maybe you've included that in the PR. Is this included in like some of our uh, docs or so that it's easy to find? And um, or perhaps at, at the moment, not yet. I think I think okay. we I have uh, um, added uh, other static documents that we have, like the overview of the periodics and the pre submits. And I should actually take an, that as an action item to add this to the list. That's true. Thanks for Just reminding to get me of that. Nice one. Uh, does anyone have any comments or questions for Daniel before we move on? Very well. Um, once again, uh, the pull request that went through earlier today, um, everything was either work in progress or um, had been commented on or had an LGTM. Um, thank you very much. I don't think one exclamation mark does it justice. So there's the second one. Um, it's one of the, the best things I can see on a Wednesday afternoon is seeing that all the pull requests have all the attention that they need. Um, and if anyone is feeling that the pull request is not getting the attention it deserves, and I'm a big fat liar, uh, now's your chance to throw it in there and we can all have a look at it. Um, and I'll move on, but if you do add something, we can come back to it at the end of the meeting. In the mailing list, there are a couple of things that I wanted to uh, highlight. Um, again, this was uh, this is an older thread, but it has been updated. Um, so this is from Edward. They had a meeting last week. Uh, Edward, are you on the call? Did you want to speak to this? Hi. Um... Hello. Yes. Yes. We had a meeting. Uh, I think yes. I actually don't uh, track how how long it took. When was the last meeting? But uh, 
Uh, yes, we had a kickoff and I presented the, the, the existing document. I got some more feedback. I'm, I'm answering it. I'm sorry that I'm slow with this uh, specific task, but uh, it will gain more momentum as we go. And we, we will do some POCs, uh, small POCs, and I'll try to update the document with, uh, with what we are planning to do. And if, and if anyone wants to contribute his time and effort to this, uh, please ping me. And so you'll be meeting again next week, is that correct? I, I need to set a meeting. I didn't set one because I, I felt I didn't do a lot uh, enough. So it will worth the meeting. So after I okay. have something in my hand, then I will I will set a be weekly one, like once every two weeks. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, the next one. Um... I don't actually remember what this is about. All right, uh, this is from Marcella. I don't know if Marcella's on the line today, um, but uh, I had a look and I, I couldn't see the run strategy once. Um, is Stu still on the line? Is this in your, your world? This seems like- Apologies, really... double muted. <laughs> yes, I'm still here. All right, so- um, All right, and so yeah, I believe it's called. Uh, it's not run strategy once. It's um, rerun on failure is what he wants. No, I uh, actually sorry, sorry to uh, to chime in here. I just saw this this morning, and I think it's actually a new strategy that was uh, that was added in, in the end of last year or something. I was completely surprised because I didn't know that either. So, um, but I don't have a good take. I don't understand it well enough to, to be able to, uh, to be able to document it and, and to help Marcelo uh, in how to put it. But yeah, if, if there, this is a new run strategy, I guess, you you are in a better position to to help him on, on than me. So well, I mean, I just learned of this run strategy at 10 35 a.m. Eastern time on uh Wednesday, July 5th. So uh, <laughs> I'll have to go get smart on it. <laughs> I didn't know it existed until you mentioned that. So um yes, I guess I would be in the best position to answer the question, but I need um to <laughs> first <laughs> surprise. Um that uh, Daniel or Stu, um, or Stu, you're welcome to, to take this on. Um, but if if you're able to ping me the PR that introduced this, then I can follow up with the author, um, and uh, it'll be a good reminder as to when we when we do add features to things, it's always good to update the documentation. Yeah, um, don't we have like a uh, you know a release note with like we just habitually put none in there? Like this would have been a great one to have <laughs> said something. Yeah, well, That's not just true. as a release, note, but also to update their existing documentation um, so things like this don't happen. Um, I know it's a joke that no one reads the docs, but documentation is super important. I know I'm heavily biased in that field. Um, excellent. All right, so we will get an answer to Marcelo about that in the not-too-distant future. Um, I believe this was from Miguel. And I think this was kind of a... Um, is Miguel on the line rather than me butchering what this is about? He is not. Um, I think it's just a bit of an FYI about uh, a new feature with regards to this. Um, you can read this in your own time. I just thought I would highlight it here so that people can, can see it and learn about it. And then we had another design. There's a design suggestion, not a design uh, proposal. Again, just highlighting it for everyone. Uh, USB pass through. Um, oh, did I see Victor on the line? I did. 
are you still with us, Victor? And would you like to speak to this while we're here? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, perfect. Because I, I do have my my system a little bit uh, uh, running tests now. So yeah, this is like the the a feature that has been requested a few times. And the current status is that it's I, like there is a working proposal and the back end has like some some rough edges that needs to be fixed but the most important part is like the the front end like the how uh, cluster admins would like to configure and expose their usb devices so that's more or less like uh, the feedback that i would uh, love to have uh, alice already provided some some reviews and some suggestions so uh, yeah, there are some work to be done, but uh, as soon as if you are interested in this feature or know someone, uh, please do forward and ask for feedback so we can have like a nice API from the start. Awesome. Thank you. Um, did anyone want to uh, raise a comment or a question for Victor while we're all here together? All right, uh, I'll leave it to you to then um, catch up with this in your own time and respond uh, at your leisure. Uh, that just leads us to the bug scrub and maybe someone from the networking team has already seen this and responded. This seems to just be a question about underlying network for secondary interfaces. Um, Eddie, if you're still here, can I CC you onto this? Uh, one second. Uh, yes, uh, I think I saw it and I just didn't know. Um, it's like, it's like I'm not clear what is the, what is ask really. Okay, okay. How is um, it, I mean, since how, you how is it uh, like, this this doesn't look like a VM problem. It looks like a pod problem or something. Or, or, or I, I just don't know how to. What does it mean? Maybe I should write write that. I don't know. Possibly. Um, I, I guess this might be the, the key part as to whether or not VXLAN will be an issue with VMs. Maybe. Um, you're welcome to jump onto that. Or since you're at the meeting and other people from your uh, SIG network aren't, we could CC one of them on. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think that will help uh, because the... Uh... But I, you can say to me and I can ask uh, that I don't, I can say that I don't understand what is, what is asked for. All righty. Thank you. All righty. And that was the only bug that we had. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone who also jumps on to the bugs and answer those questions and, and raises the PRs that solve those things. Just looking back up, I can't see anything having been added uh, into the anything else. Um, so um, I'll just do a quick little, is there anything that anyone would like to raise that hasn't been added to the agenda while we're really together before we close to the day? I'll take that as an emphatic no. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming and participating in the conversations. Um, have a lovely week. Have a lovely weekend. And we'll see you all next week, uh, hopefully, all things being equal, with version one having been released. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. See you. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.